This is 102.3 WHIV LPFM in New Orleans. We are Radio Nola HIV with programming. That's right, programming dedicated to human rights and social justice. WHIVFM.org. We honor independent voices. We are not a radio station with a mission. No, we are a mission with the radio station. End all wars. Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Allen Derry. You are listening to COVID Noise Filter. This is the every other day daily long show. Ah, I mess that up. But nonetheless, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, either live here on the Facebooks and soon to be on the YouTubes as well, or, or if you're listening and tuning in on WHIV. Sitting across the digital divide is my friend and yours. Say hello, Doc Griggs. Hello, Doc Griggs. Hello, hello, hello. We are so happy to have you back. Doc Griggs took a little bit of time off last week for some mental health respite, um, or rather uh, time off for not necessarily mental health issues, but just to kind of uh, ease on the stress that COVID and everything else has brought. I guess you can say that was a little bit of a staycation. Doc Griggs, how was your week off? We miss you here. Uh, I missed you too, man. It was, uh, it was really, it was good. It was good. Uh, trying to unplug, which I did not successfully do, one hundred percent. Yes, we, uh, Dave Rostin and I tried the har our hardest to to not bother you and not fussy with things. We had a lot of thing. We had a lot of things going on. We're going to actually go to one of those things that we had going on in just a moment. But uh, we didn't want to fuss you at all. But uh, it seemed like you were still kind of working to a certain degree. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, we got it. This COVID is not over. Um, and from the looks of things, a lot of people would argue with us otherwise. So you got to keep <laughs> fighting the good fight. <laughs> um, well, I am glad uh, that you are well. Uh, a lot of people are asking, so we, we have to definitely ask Doc Griggs, how is the, the new pooch? Certainly, I care. Uh, what's going on with the new dog? So he's good and bad. Uh, he's, he's growing. Uh, he's one of the most still an adorable pup, but he's just into everything as every good puppy should be. Right. So he's, and are, he's a good are, they, are the two getting along? Uh, somewhat. Uh, I think Poppy's having issues with him growing up and reaching adolescence and realizing there's going to be another male dog around here. So right. they, they, they have their, their moments. Good. But for the most part, they're pretty good. Good. Good to hear. Uh, Doc Griggs, I usually start every show uh, by asking you what you talked about on the news. Uh, yeah, but for some reason today, we don't have to do that. I think we should skip that part because I think uh, it's uh, – I'll, I'll let you take care of that. Because well, last week while you were gone, uh, we officially um, – Drop this beauty. We've been hinting at it for the longest time in the world. Uh, you guys have been seeing uh, pieces and parts of it, and we're so happy to finally be able to pretty all the uh, uh, the COVID noise filter, uh, uh, the vicious virus. No, sorry, the Valiant vaccine versus the vicious virus. This is a project Doc Griggs and I have been working on uh, for some time. So I hope you guys enjoy. That's me. And I'm Doc Griggs, and I'm a community health specialist. That's me. So, these COVID-19 vaccines are super safe and effective, and thankfully, were developed quickly in response to the global pandemic. First, let's explain how the coronavirus makes us sick. Ooh, check out those spike proteins on the coronavirus. They help it burst through healthy cells, where it replicates inside, destroying the cells and making us sick. I really hate that dude. The vaccine will take care of him. Vaccines stimulate your immune system to fight viruses. Some of the COVID Mignon can't hear it. What? They Mignon says she can't hear it. Oh, no. Oh, no, I wonder if... Uh... Is, is she the only one? I actually hear it through your speakers, I think. They're, oh, you know what? Yeah, we remember we used to do this when we first started. We we were trying to play music, and we couldn't figure out how to get music played. Were other folks, uh, could they hear it? 
Um, or was it just uh, uh, was it just Mignon? So far, just Mignon. Okay. Unless, it's low. They said the volume. Huh? Carla said it's low. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, That's through your speaker. So, is there a way to get your microphone by your speaker? Well, n I, I'm not using external speakers right now. So, uh, I, I'll see if I could try to turn up the. No, it's on maximum volume. Yeah, Gracie um, said couldn't hear. Couldn't hear, huh? Volume is low. Couldn't hear. Wow. Okay. Um. Up, 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 up. Well, let's. I mean, should we, we'll just let's just we'll just play it out. We'll just. It's almost done anyway. We'll just finish it off. And there it is. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Doc Riggs. <laughs> uh, so we are so happy to have that. Uh, I think Doc Riggs, I'm not really sure what happened with him, um, but I think that he'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to uh, put the in the um, in the chat box. I am going to put the... Um, I'm going to put the uh, link for that. It is on our YouTube page uh, for uh, Noise Filter. And that YouTube page is also going to be where we're going to be streaming uh, from uh, as well. Uh, moving forward, uh, we are going to have uh, this stream going through there as well. So, um, Doc Riggs, we've been working on that for um, oh. since December. Yeah, six months. Yeah, uh, so w one two minute video. <laughs> it's been yeah. it's been a hell of a it's been a hell of a trip uh, going through it. We do have more of those as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the positive. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, clicking on that link uh, and helping to get that the uh, the word out, we would be so grateful uh, if you guys help spread this on the social medias. Um, we are trying to uh, get this uh, far uh, and wide and potentially, uh, you know, dare I say, dare, dare, uh, have more of these uh, and uh, uh, and uh, continue to maybe even make a series out of them. So I ask you again, Doc Greg, so what did you talk about on the news today? So we talked about the cartoon. We talked about the animation. <laughs> the uh, uh, This is another angle to combat mis and disinformation. Um, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> it certainly has been a long time coming. What kind of response did you get from the newsroom? Got an, an, an amazing response. They want to continue to support us. And uh, every time we have one that comes out, and I'm working on trying to get it into the rotation to play for us to help educate uh, our community. Yeah. Have you heard from any kids that have watched it by any chance? Yeah, uh, my friend's 12-year-old loved it. She said that. I, I think it's amazing, but that's still not going to convince me to take the shot. I think ah! she's afraid of needles. <laughs> I think she has a thing with needles. Got it. All right. Well, that that's uh, she's a young person. That, 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 that does happen. But that is actually hilarious. Uh, all right. Here, let's uh, – uh, here we have our, our comment here. So I had an occurrence that may have something to do with the vaccine. 13 days after my second vaccine, I woke with my right breast swollen and tender, diagnosed with granulomatous mastitis. The surgical oncologist said that it is rare and that for some reason um, – let me see if that fit, uh, the immune system kicked in the hyperdrive – which prompted me to ask if the vaccine could be the culprit. He said, it just might. I got the shot in my right arm and, uh, and into, yeah. They are going to monitor for the next six months. The swelling, the tenderness went away in about four days. Wow. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. 
um, if that that could have been the case uh, with that. Uh, so uh, thank you for sharing, Mignon. I, th- I think that's that certainly um, that must have been very scary. And I, I, it seems like that uh, 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 this is something that, again, like you said, they're going to continue to follow and watch. And I hope that you get better quickly. Hey, Doc Riggs, it seems as though you may have been frozen. Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, but you you uh, you know there, you. There, there there was there is uh, an associated lymphadenitis on the same side, usually in the axilla or the lymph nodes swollen in the underarm on the side of uh, the same side that someone's had the injection for women, of course. Um, that can give you that can interfere with their mammograms. Right. So this is it's not it's not it's not it's a not far under- cry. Yeah, it's not a far cry. I'm gonna try to log out, log back in, and see if I can okay. sync back up. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you uh, so much for uh, for sharing. Uh, lymph nodes are fine. Yeah. I I can I can only imagine. Um, and, uh, and again, as I said, we hope that you are better, uh, soon. Um, and I'm glad that you've got, um, the ability to, uh, have somebody look after, uh, yourself, uh, and, um, <clears throat> and make sure that, uh, that you are going to be doing better. So, all right. So all that being said, uh, let's just go ahead and, uh, and let's get started here with some stories. Uh, let's see. The, uh, here we have, uh, let's make sure that we're on over here. We are, um, let's see here. The CDC apparently believes relax, relaxing mask requirements will encourage people who haven't already gotten vaccinated to do so. Some experts in human behavior say not likely. The gamble is people will be nervous in a maskless world if they aren't vaccinated. The risk is that those people never felt at risk. Uh, and uh, all this will do is cause unvaccinated people to go unmasked. Doc Riggs, what are your thoughts about all that? That's what we've been saying the whole time. Uh, I don't know where they came up with the logic for this one, but I'm just, I just totally, we've been totally against it from the very beginning. Uh, and that's what we're seeing the, the consequence of. All it is is having people that aren't masked, that weren't wearing a mask anyway, to be like, well, good, I don't have to wear it. And I don't necessarily have to tell the truth about being vaccinated. Absolutely. Um, it, it is, uh, it has been insane. Uh, it has been insane how uh, this has all kind of manifested. Like, you know, one of the things that occurred to me is that you still have um, 18 year, you know, they, they lowered the age 12 to what, 12 to 16 now can get vaccinated. Well, they hadn't even been a full month out for those that got Moderna. They hadn't even been a full month out. So what were families supposed to do with the parents that were vaccinated, but their kids aren't even completely vaccinated. Like there should have been a gradual, some sort of graduated element, uh, to get back into it. Uh, and so it was ridiculous. And have you heard about the people now who are in the past, uh, were not masking because of all the various conspiracy sorts of things, but now they're masking because now they're saying that people who are vaccinated are going to breathe their microchips onto them. So now oh. they are. I'm sorry. <laughs> they they I tried to keep a straight it. face. They wouldn't <laughs> ask for a virus, but they're masking now because they don't want a microchip. Wow. Only in America, dude. Yeah, and you know what? They read that information on their phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ultimate microchip, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's It has been insane. All right. With more than 52, uh, uh, with 52 more COVID-19 fatalities added to to the statewide total. Texas has crossed over the 50,000 deaths mark. Wow. The number per day has been increasing into the 30s early this month, beginning with a steady climb back in the 50s. Still, the state is now reporting about the same number of deaths in a week they were reporting every day in January. So another example of how we're just, you know, uh, we seem to be divorced from reality. Panama temporarily closed its border with Colombia starting yesterday at the spread of COVID-19. Uh, Panama said Colombia's decision to reopen borders puts at risk, significant risk. All right. So that's that. So I, we do have some AstraZeneca uh, news, but uh, I'll give you some good news here. Some good news for AstraZeneca. Public Health England says real life data suggests it's providing more protection than expected from clinical trials. Um, second dose, the chance of falling ill is reduced to around 89%, as opposed to previously believed 70 to 75%. 
Other states are now taking notice of the success of vaccine. Uh, uh, Ohio's vaccine lottery and are, are doing similar things. New Yorkers 18 and older who get their first dose between May 24th and 28th at some locations across the state will get a free lottery scratch-off ticket for a $5 million amount. Maryland also announced a $2 million vax cash promotion, which will divide that amount amongst 41 residents who get vaccinated and daily drawings will reward some of the newly vaccinated with $40,000 starting May 25th until July 4th. And on the 4th, one person will win $400,000. Doc Riggs, what are your thoughts about some of that stuff? I was actually... Uh, I just read Elizabeth. I got distracted by Elizabeth's comment that we'll get to. Um, uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of speechless. I got, I got caught off guard. I'm, that's horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I pre-read the chat and I missed it because I was like, wait, what? Right. That's that is. Uh, <laughs> um, well, did you want to answer that, or did you want to answer the, the what we just were talking about, or, or? Well, if you can just read me, I caught a part of it. I, I, I totally I zoned out, and then I want to both get to that. Uh, got it, got it, got it. No, no, it's the idea of using a lot like Ohio's is passing out monies for, uh, for the lottery um, seeing, for lotteries, and then you were seeing other states doing the same thing as well. I think it's a great idea considering the economy. I think. Down here, we're giving away shots, crawfish, catfish plates, you name it, whatever it takes to get vaccinated. And as we're doing this, I want people to understand that this is an ongoing process, as are all uh, medications and all of medicine and health. Uh, it's a continual improvement process. So th just because we say it's ongoing research doesn't mean that there's something nefarious going on. Uh, we're all constantly trying to improve, and we're at the very beginning of it here. So you're going to, the, the vaccines are going to get better. Um, we're going to know more information the whole nine, but we got to get as many people vaccinated as possible. And I'm using uh, my old uh, radio days and we were sitting in the same booth using a to a corny transition so we can get to what um, Elizabeth. No, I um, think that's a, it's a, it's a per perfect segue. Go ahead. Yeah. So I want to, I want to lay this platform first though. Doc, what percentage of all of the vaccines does India contribute? What percentage? Uh, two percent. They've only had two percent of the country vaccinated. Right, but uh, as far as vaccine production, they make oh, it significant. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, 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 I can't remember whether it's sixteen. It's not sixty. So it's 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 a significant amount of vaccine production to the world supply, um, as far as numbers. But the problem they're having, and the reason they're at two percent, is because of its supply chain and its logistics and its politics and its bureaucracy and its it's 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 all the things that we were worried about in our country um, and that we're worried about now in any in any country. Actually, it's just just people getting in the way of protecting us as far as science. Um, and it's just it's just human nature. Uh, with that said, um, Doc, if you want to read what Elizabeth put in there. My friend in India, let me know that this variant is breaking through whatever one dose vaccine they have and people who were one dose vaccine there are now dying to be clear. Their vaccines aren't the same ones as the U S but essentially there is uh, there is some breakthrough uh, with at least, I think that in India it's possibly going to be AstraZeneca. I imagine is what they're getting, but uh, um, it clearly um, we don't know how they're going to be toward the MRNA vaccines uh, or Johnson and Johnson, essentially um, there was some, no, go ahead. There, there was some. There was some data that was released last week. I don't have it in the rundown that showed that the India variant um, was protected by the mRNA vaccines. But we've said this once. We said it a million times. Just because there's data on it now today doesn't mean there's going to be data in the exact equal and opposite direction tomorrow. Yeah, we have another cartoon, folks. Stay tuned. We have another one in the series that will explain uh, potentially the way this all works. Um, and the, the fact that, Elizabeth, thank you for that information. And even th it's not the fact that they are the same that's important uh, that to know that. I'm glad you put that out there. But the fact that anything broke through any of the vaccines, uh, particularly, the, you know, there's a lot of hope with a single dose vaccine. There's a, hot, a lot of hope with a two dose and really a lot of hope with a single dose. So the fact that the virus can can move. And, and, and change its, its defenses against our defenses 
is really concerning. No, absolutely. Um, and, you know, like you said, we do have a um, video coming up about that to explain the boosters and the variants. Uh, Covishield, which is AstraZeneca and Co Covaxin. So, yeah, they, they're using Covishield, um, uh, which I think is also in the that's an, also another problem because Covishield is it's being used in the um, geez, the Seychelles and the Seychelles are having a huge uptick in cases. And we don't know why there is that huge uptick in cases. Could it be um, either vaccine failure? I doubt it. Could it be a variant? More likely. Um, Angela asks here. Uh, do either of you know about cases of myocarditis in younger patients in response to mRNA vaccines? There's some talk of it in COVID-19 webinars for healthcare practitioners put on through the Oregon Health Authority. So um, the answer is, is has it been reported? Yes, but you got to look at the incidents, right? Remember we went on pause uh, with the um, Johnson & Johnson vaccine for six out of six million cases. They have to report adverse events. Um, I don't know the, the details of the myocarditis, but we do know that it, it has been, there have been incidences reported. Um, I think there are a few right now though. So we'll just have to wait and see like with everything else. That. Now it says I'm in the show and he's not here. Can y'all hear me? Sorry, dude. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I think that Angela, to finish off Doc Griggs' question, um, or answer rather, um, there is some um, noise. That's what we refer to it as. We're not being disrespectful when we refer to it as noise. Uh, noise is, the, is an epidemiological term. Um, red flags may be another term to be used as well. Um, I don't know enough to answer it, but Angela, now that you've strongly put it on my uh, radar uh come wednesday and for wednesday's show we'll have a little bit more information about it yeah and also um just to add uh injury to more injury uh they also got hit by cyclone so they were out of power for days can you imagine that i mean we're starting to enter that right now ourselves um you know the, the did you hear that we've almost broke the record for rains uh this year yeah. yep already <laughs> <laughs> that's insane, right? I mean, it's just is been that kind of thing. You remember last year, and unfortunately, we're still praying for our folks in Lake Charles because they got hit again last week uh, in southwest Louisiana. Uh, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, the weather is is really not being it's it's, it's being unrelenting. Uh, we have a break this week, and we don't we only know what the future holds. We uh, there are going to be at least they said six named storms potentially. Right. Uh, they said it's going to be an, uh, the the there's going to be increased activity. Again, we're just going to have to wait and see and just adapt. No, you're absolutely right. And it is going to be, I mean, it has been insane watching these storms. Then, the, you know, like I, I made the joke the other day, uh, yesterday, I think that was something along the lines of um, uh, that if last week could have been a musical genre, the night skies were super emo, you know, like yeah. it was the most dramatic yeah. It was the most dramatic skies that I've ever, ever seen. So um, I put in the chat box an article that, uh, I, that I'm reading right now. It's an incredibly interesting article. It was forwarded to me by uh, the president, uh, uh, President Verrett, uh, who's a, a world-renowned um, uh, immunologist. He's the president of Xavier. And he wanted me to have a look at it. And the reason why I mentioned that is that it highlights this next article. I would have never given this tw two thoughts, but more and more, you know, uh, it, I have to start considering it. There was a time when anyone who suggested that the novel coronavirus escaped from a lab in Wuhan was branded a conspiracy theorist. So certain that it was reporting uh, that um, so certain was reporting that it emerged naturally. Now, none other than Dr. Fauci says that he's not convinced. He joins another rising number of voices calling for real investigation to the virus origins. For example, Wall Street Journal reported three researchers from China's Wuhan Institute sought hospital case care in November 2019, months before the outbreak was disclosed, their source was a previously undisclosed U.S. intelligence report. So I put in the chat box there that article. Definitely just kind of open it up and go back to it or what have you. But it is the first article of its kind that really kind of lays out a very, very sober 
argument. Now, again, now we're not saying a virus that was that was um, that was uh, created in a lab, right? In no way was you know does anybody believe that this virus was created in a lab. But what I think is worth questioning is could there have been research that was being done on this virus? So just standard research and could research protocols have been broken and as a result of research protocols having been violated, certainly not on purpose. I'm not saying that there's anything that was on purpose or what have you, but could there have been a situation where they were working on this virus, a naturally occurring virus? So again, in no way am I implying that there was any human uh, intervention at all. Could this Institute of Virology just been working and studying this virus, whatever protocols were broken, or maybe they didn't have the right protocols in place, but essentially somebody may have gotten sick with the virus and then that unleashed itself uh, onto the world. And now what we have seen since then is potential cover-up as a result of that. I think that I think it's worth asking, and I think that article actually really asks a very good uh, and brings some up some very, very good points. So, Doc Griggs, I know you and I haven't talked about this, so I don't mean to be kind of asking about something like this out of the blue, uh, but do you have thoughts about this, and is this something you have kind of given any thought to? Well, this isn't an uncommon question. Um, it's something that certainly has been in the, the realm of possibility for a lot of people. I get asked that question a lot. Um, and I, I, I always, I do say that it, it's possible, but highly unlikely. Um, but anything's possible. Um, it is coincidental that down the street from the Wuhan market or in close proximity is a lab in Wuhan. If I, I remember that story from months ago, um, but, there, right. they, it, but, but that doesn't, and you know, I'm, I'm big for the yes. And that doesn't mean that there haven't been a family of coronaviruses trying to get into jumping in and out of our species. We're trying to jump into our species and stay um, while this happens. So I, I'm really interested to read that article and then find out more. I'd rather get to the, the, the heart of it. It would be, I think right. it would be a, a bigger public trust thing if we were, if, if, if it were the truth to not cover it up, but hopefully this isn't the case. Right. You know, and the other thing, too, is that also the person who forwarded it to me was really one of the people uh, that I worked with throughout the whole year. One of the most, you know, one of the most brilliant minds I ever met, uh, a, a true, true, true scientist uh, of uh, the, uh, a, you know, of the utmost uh, who deserves the utmost respect. Uh, uh, and that's, uh, of course, uh, a Dr. Verrett, President Verrett, the president of, of Xavier. And, uh, you know, he sent it to me and said, hey, I just thought that you might want to watch. You may want to see this and uh, and read this. And it is a very sobering uh, account of what a very, very good medical journalist put together a lot of kind of the ins and outs of what happened and kind of read between the lines and is giving his opinion about things. So it's certainly very interesting. Love to hear your uh, your input after after you read it. Um, yeah, I look forward to it. All right. Um, so one thing that we have not talked a lot about, uh, although we have alluded to it, is now cases in the U.S. now have dropped to levels that we have not seen since June, sparking optimism that vaccinations are limiting severe cases and viral spread. Increasingly, pre-pandemic life has largely resumed <laughs> with states that have struck restrictions preparing to drop them. Health experts, however, continue to say not enough Americans have been vaccinated to eliminate the potential for new variants to extend the pandemic. Dr. Riggs, this is something that we've talked about. We've not yet talked about the lack of cases that we've seen. Cases uh, uh, cases uh, have been very low, but one thing that we have talked about all the time is the variants that could potentially emerge as a result of not everybody being vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a race between vaccines and viruses I mean, and variants. Uh, part of the reason that we really want we want the, as many people to get vaccinated as possible is because it gives us a concrete number uh, that we can actually count. We don't know the number of people that have recovered, asymptomatic people that have recovered or people that had symptoms but didn't know it was COVID. We'll never know what that actual number is when it comes to herd immunity. It's not like when you get to herd immunity, you hit 80 percent and a light switch goes off and it's all over. When we know that we have at least a minimum of 80% of our population vaccinated, 
fully vaccinated and two weeks out, uh, we can make policies. You can make concrete plans. You can you can look for trends because there's that. If you can count it, you can measure it. If you can measure it and count it, you can plan and make policies based on it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, such a good point. And uh, man, is if there's ever was a race against time, it's right now. And we definitely yeah. need uh, we need more. That's why I'm such a fan of those uh, states that are using incentives. I think that's such a great idea. Um, there's an image uh, that you might have uh, been given about what kind of people are reluctant about getting the vaccines, which is fine. Now, that image now includes young mothers. A study out of Northwestern, Harvard, and Rutgers shows parents are more likely to resist the vaccine versus other adults across all racial groups. 73% of black parents expressed being vaccine hesitant or resistant, and the study found that young mothers are the most vaccine res uh, resistant amongst all groups. Uh, one of the th one of the things that we uh, have uh, today is uh, I'm going to be showing you some research about how uh, the uh, vaccine uh, did well in um, uh, amongst uh, pregnant uh, women. In other words, there was no uh, effects as a result of pregnancy in India. An extreme example: vaccine hesitancy. And the result of vaccine mis and the result of max vaccine information, a team of uh, health uh, officials arrived in the village in Badabanka to administer vaccines, and numerous citizens jumped in the river and started swimming away to avoid them. Only 18 took the shot. Wow! Others believe they were going to be injected with poison. My goodness. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, all right. So we now U.S. school districts are going to be uh, uh, opening uh, in person uh, in New York City. That is uh, good. I think the one thing that we saw uh, with research that emerged last week is that I think I have it in the rundown that ventilation, 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 which is something that we have been talking about forever. So New York City will eliminate remote learning for the fall. Uh, in the U.S., new cases and deaths dropped to the lowest levels in nearly a year. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, Stephen Colbert's late night show will resume filming soon before a vaccinated live audience. That's uh, pretty impressive. Um, and what else we have there? Dude, what do you think is going to happen as a result of uh, the Olympics? Oh, I don't know. I, I thought that people were trying to boycott it. We, we have the potential for super, multiple super uh, multiple super spreader events and then to travel across back to multiple countries. So all we're going to have to do is protect ourselves as best as possible uh, and wait and see. Absolutely. All right. Here's a quick rapid fire of some interesting research. Real quick, um, though, I want to go back to the India jumping into the river. If what Elizabeth said was true, imagine if one of your family members got injected with the vaccine for COVID, then they got COVID and died. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how that's how that works and that's why I sign this is why we like it you speak to so many points there Eric on the importance of education, the importance of nuance, the importance of getting the right information out there the in something that you speak about all the time I and mean, this is your lane, the importance of of health literacy. And without health literacy, this is how misinformation emanates. There's no question about that. Eric? Yeah, th th there needs to be conversations from the bench or the lab. There needs to be a plan. The moment something is discovered in a lab, they need to talk to a communication specialist before they address the general public uh, yeah. to talk about it and to hash it out and then work their way back. You dictate, you, you, you always speak to your least common denominator or the least exposed to your area of specialty and then build back based on questions. That way, no one feels uncomfortable in the room. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and in fact, you bring up a, such a good point um, and that you'll be happy to know that I'll be speaking at a major conference on in October 28th or 29th live. I, I, I gave my first live lecture, Eric, the other day. How did that um, feel? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Um, it was sort of weird to be sitting in a room. Everybody was vaccinated. I thought they were going to all be masked. They told me they were going to be masked and they were unmasked. And so oh, I man. started I started talking masked and then I felt very conscientious. So I took my mask off. But um, I would have made him put it on. Uh, the um, what was I gonna say? 
oh, I'm going to be speaking uh, to a, a, a thousand physicians about the need for, and I'm going to make the argument that medical school needs to start teaching communications and public speaking courses as part of their curriculum moving forward. Yeah, I agree. I thought that I thought that was something that you'd find interesting. So yeah, they, a- a- they, they asked me what I wanted to speak on. And I said, I wanted to speak on that. And they said, can you give us a little bit of COVID-22? And I said, yes, I'll give you COVID-2022. But I also want to make a point about the importance of, of teaching doctors how to speak in public. Um, here, uh, Angela says another group of vaccine hesitants, uh, worth considering is immigrants from countries with universal health care of clients in that category who have expressed feelings of abandonment by our system, which leads to distrust when they are not, uh, I can't read the rest of it when they are not receiving any help with their other issues. Yeah, that's a very, very, very good point. Uh, and it does speak to the importance of um, what something that we talk about all the time is uh, that health is a human right. And unfortunately, uh, in our system uh, of, uh, of capitalism and extreme capitalism here, um, we uh, see that it is treated as, um, as a commodity. Eric, can you take over really quickly? Yeah, so the, that's one yeah, of the Eric, can I biggest... <laughs> I can take over if you step away. We can hear your conversation. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> uh, that leads to the, the universal health care that all of these vaccines are uh, being offered as a free service right now. So we have an opportunity to get a glimpse of what might happen if <laughs> – I wonder if, if we had universal health care, would more people be prone, more men in particular be prone to go to the doctor? Uh, we're kind of saying we're, we're, we're kind of saying like a pilot or a microcosm of universal health care with the universal free protection and offering of the vaccine. And a lot of people are saying no and opting away from it. So I just wonder how much of access if you if we open up access, how many more people would actually choose to go? You know, you know what makes the difference is education. It's education, yeah, which yeah. goes always goes. I live in the lane of health literacy. It's community medicine. It's health literacy. It's it's meeting people where they are and empowering them to be champions, not just of their own health, but of the information. And until we're able to do that, we can open up the system. We can do everything, but our numbers won't change until we deal exactly like we're dealing with COVID-19 um, with everything else. We deal with the mis and disinformation and the, the generational um, the gen- gener- generational passing down of misinformation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so there's so much to talk about there, Eric. I mean, and I, I know that we will continue. I just do want to kind of push on a little bit. Yeah. Um, real quickly here, um, this was a study that was in the Journal of Infectious Diseases. Um, and uh, what it is showing is that the risk for venothromboembolism was double with the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine and the risk for cerebral vi- uh, venous thrombosis was a 20 fold elevated in a, in the study cohort of Denmark and Norway. The study confirms that excess risk for thrombotic events amongst AstraZeneca vaccine recipients, especially for uh, central venous thrombosis as the vaccinated cohort consisted mainly of active healthcare and social services workers with low prevalence of severe comorbidities. These reported risk ratios and excess adverse events may represent underestimates and a healthy uh, vaccine may uh, uh, affect, may explain the cohort's lower mortality. All in all, boy, this is not, um, this does not bode well. And, uh, and all I can say um, is that uh, we really need to be focusing on possibly just making recommendations of mRNA vaccines. There's no question about that. Yeah, the unfortunate thing, though, is some of our lower resource country uh, countries, Jamaica in particular, only a few weeks ago, uh, got vaccines. What's made available to them has been the AstraZeneca, one that we're not yeah. using in our country. Yep. So it's it's going to be an interesting, looking at the whole mechanism of the adenoviruses versus the mRNA, we're going to get to a point where we compare, but we just want to get as many people vaccinated right now. And man, that's, that was, uh, but it's data. It's, it's, we have to, we right. have to report the data. Yeah, we yeah, absolutely. 
Um, here was a really interesting story, Eric. Look at this. Second presentations of COVID-19 due to non-variant of concerned strains. Several months after initial recovery, four health workers in Brazil were reinfected with the original SARS-CoV-2 strain, so the one that emerged out of <laughs> Wuhan. <laughs> this report provides the best evidence yet that reinfection can occur in apparently normal hosts and that the reinfecting virus may be similar, if not identical, to the original SARS-CoV-2 virus. The major lessons here are that individuals with continued exposure to SARS-CoV-2 should rigorously remain or maintain mitigated practices and, ben and could benefit from vaccination after infection. Wait, you mean just, mitigated? When you say mitigated practices, you mean they need to wear a mask and they need to social distance <laughs> and do the imagine. things to protect themselves? Because there's imagine. no, again, I like to say there's no law of man, nature, or alien that says that two different strains or uh, the original strain can't coexist with variants that are already in the general population. Right. There's 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 yeah. nothing that says that once the virus mutates, oh well, that's it, you caught me, huh? Ah. I'm done. Yeah, we, we, we did that one yesterday. No, the original strain still exists and is as lethal or as dangerous as it was in the very beginning. But it just has cousins now and evolved twin cousins and brothers and sisters now with that wear different uh, clothing and armor uh, to evade. So it's it's now is not the time to relax. No, absolutely. Now is not the time to relax. And again, this goes back to what you and I have been talking about is our shock that the CDC relaxed their, their guidelines the way they did. Uh, COVID-19 mRNA vaccines appear safe in pregnancy. Available yeah, after everything we just said, you want to say, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, available data from the CDC vSafe and the vaccine adverse reporting system do not indicate increased incidence of adverse reactions in pregnant uh, women. It was a small study. It was reliance on voluntary reporting. Only a small percentage of vaccinated pregnant individuals lack a control population, all the stuff that we think about. But, 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 but. If this is reassuring that that both uh, mRNA vaccines do appear to be safe and well tolerated during pregnancy. Now, this is something that I wish we could get out to the news, and this is the sort of thing that the news needs to be leading with in that in that uh, report. Uh, in fact, if I could put a request in, Doc Riggs, uh, uh, if you could uh, possibly highlight that on your news show, that would actually be a great idea. If if you're taking if you're taking requests. Yeah, I'll, I'll run it by. I know we've done some things on safety and pregnancy before, and we've said it. Um, I think that's – it's a big <laughs> – the sad thing is that the positive thing that comes out about the mRNA virus, now you want to scrutinize it as opposed to all these other anecdotal studies that are non-peer-reviewed, pre-printed, that they make a big deal about. They point out all right. of it. Well, it was not a control study. Well, it was That's the way you should look at every study. That's the way we should read every single – Study and article that comes out is was a control, a randomized control, double blind clinical trial. Was the the end? Was the number large enough? Uh, what was the how many adverse events were uh, reported? Blah 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 blah. The same level of scrutiny should be put to all of them, but it's something to bring up because it is reassuring, uh, especially with us de escalating things in kids. We're getting the attentions, the attention of moms in all stages, from the the new moms to the grandmoms. So we want to make sure that we're able to address all of them. Absolutely. And now that we have data suggesting that, that it's actually been good and helpful, I think that's I think that's strong. I think that's positive, And I think that we're moving into the step of, in the right direction. Um, Angela asked real quickly here, uh, is it true um, that the evidence pointing to more long lasting immunity protection after vaccines than naturally acquired? I think for the most part, the answer is true. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason is, is that with the vaccines, you're getting a very standardized dose. But again, remember, all of this gets put into memory B and T cells anyway. So it's not like, again, the way antibodies work is they go away after some time, right? Otherwise, think about this. you If you had a cold in 2015, you don't have the antibodies still circulating from that cold in 2015. If you did, our, our, our blood would be sludge full of protein. 
Um, and so, uh, so the, you know, essentially, um, just like anything else, like, you, you know, you may not necessarily keep your tax documents, but you may have a record of them in the cloud. And so memory B cells and T cells are just like the memory copy. You mean, you don't necessarily need a paper copy. Um, but when you do need it, you know where to find it. And that's how your immune system works is something along those lines. Um, I, just, I wanted I, to go back to real quick, the, the natural immunity versus vaccine immunity de deal. Um, it, it's kind of tough to say because you don't know, we don't know the actual number of people that have been been infected. You know what I mean? You can't really compare, even though we can compare. Right. We know we right. know the the long term response in this number of people that have been vaccinated. We have no idea how many people have recovered to actually right. say. You, you, know, you know what I mean? But right. it's, we just know that there does exist long term B cell and T cell immunity that work right. exactly. I can almost see. An animation about how that works. Uh, in the cloud. I, can, I can almost actually, see it. I can almost see it. Actually, you know what? That's I a like brilliant. It. That is a brilliant idea. We. That this is a great. I, that is a great like idea. This that, is the way what, the, the immune system works. This is a three, three different tiers, and it's like saving your taxes as opposed to keeping in the cloud. You can know to throw the throw the papers away. Yeah, uh, that is great. Fetty, we will answer this question uh, 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 with another one of our animations, but is getting vaccinated the equivalent of getting a booster shot for those with natural immunity? Um, <laughs> that's actually, it's th that is actually a very nuanced and excellent question. Uh, and yeah. the reason is, so let's, just not, let's not use the word booster. We're going to talk about boosters in terms of um, the variants, but what we will say is that for people who have had coronavirus before, like somebody that I know, after he got his first dose of vaccine, his levels were at the standardized levels of uh, of uh, of what the uh, uh, of what they were looking for when they established those protocols. In other words. Um, if you know his levels, if if Eric's levels were at a three and the standardized levels were get, to get to a ten, it just took one dose of vaccine to get people to get to that point. Whereas people like myself who didn't get coronavirus, it took two doses. So the first dose usually gets you to a level of three or four, and the second dose will get you to a level of ten. Those numbers, of course, are arbitrary, but uh, it, they're there to to use as an example. I, we're super running out of time. We haven't even gotten to epi stuff. Eric, I'll, I'll present more of these slides on Wednesday, but just to kind yeah. of give you a quick thing, masks in schools and ventilations, like I said, have shown to be very helpful. Um, we're seeing uh, vaccine sites closing around the country. I'll go into some of this. I do want to show the mass use and ventilation uh, article out of the CDC. Um, the uh, question of HIPAA. Uh, does not bound uh, to ask about your vaccination status. So there is no HIPAA there. And then uh, we'll uh, sit and, and go over some of these uh, 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 really uh, uh, horrible people, fake news or real public health threat and what have you. But what yeah. I really do want to get to is um, I do want to get to, uh, yeah, I want to get to the numbers really quickly. Um we uh, are uh, approaching 168 million cases with uh, three point, almost 3.5 uh, million deaths uh, worldwide. And of course, as we know, these are huge undercounts. Cases are dropping pretty rapidly, 485,000 with almost 10,000 deaths uh, last, uh, last uh, uh, week, or yesterday rather. You can see the cases are going down 12%. We'll look at a map in just a moment. But India, Brazil, Argentina, and the U.S., the highest uh, cases uh, in the world. And we'll look at that in a quick second. But we are definitely out of that fourth phase. As you can see here, um, we, uh, we peaked out somewhere around here. Um, and, uh, and again, one thing, Erica, you know, that you and I've talked a lot about is the idea of, um, can, um, what happens when, uh, uh, when the winter time comes with a, uh, uh, with the peaks, um, and we were predicting that there was going to be a huge uptick in cases. Of course, that prediction came true. One thing that we never accounted for was what happens in this, in the springtime 
<laughs> after a global pandemic has been going on for a year. Well, we did always recognize that 1919 did have an uptick in cases, but it was never this big. It was never this bad. But uh, it's certainly very interesting to see that this is kind of where we're at right now. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just any thoughts there? Yeah, my concern is the coming winter and next spring. Yep. Um, this is not going to just go plummet, especially if we reach the plateau with vaccines and things are opening back up. Are we, well, I guess we'll just have to live it and let's see what happens. Yep. Number of deaths um, are uh, going down as well, uh, which is our, of course, a lagging indicator. And this is looking at the hot spot, man. And look what's hot right now. I mean, um, Argentina is the hot spot right now in the world. Uh, look, even India has kind of chilled out a little bit compared to Brazil. But uh, yeah. we are still seeing quite a bit of cases uh, globally um, and uh, something uh, for us just to, to think about and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, put in our thoughts uh, of Argentina. And I think that's Uruguay right here as well. Um, let's see what else I have new. Uh, U.S. We're at about 34 million cases. Uh, we talked about how we were going to exceed over 600,000 cases. We did 604,263 new cases, 15,131. That is insane. Deaths, 228. When did you ever see numbers this low? Like in June, right? You know, it's it's really insane. Look at our seven day case rate has is just dropping 92 77 66 48 you know you it. can see the seven day course here uh, has been falling significantly cases have fallen 23 percent deaths fallen 4.1 percent hospitalizations 12 percent positivity rate is 3.1 percent which is really incredible but here's what the u.s looks like dude that's insane look at yeah. that <laughs> yeah that's encouraging, actually. Yep. With 39% of the country fully vaccinated, 49% at least one dose. We definitely need more of that to get to the uh, elusive uh, herd immunity, but at least we're making steps into the uh, right direction. And then lastly, looking at uh, thank you uh, to uh, all the folks at uh, Ryan White Part F for making the show reality. Um, looking at Louisiana, um, of course, because it's Monday, the numbers are blank, but uh, 468,402 deaths are 10,535. Um, and our epi curve shows that we have reached some sort of balance. Um, uh, we are going to probably be living in this low level bit of coronavirus probably for some time. Um, tests have kind of more or less stabilized. Hospitalizations have gone down a little bit. And uh, deaths are starting to kind of reach some sort of steady state, you know, uh, as well. The uh, looking at uh, COVID Act now, uh, are, uh, in, uh, we are still at a medium risk level, 9.4 per 100,000, then 9.2 infection rate, more or less the same test positivity rate, a little bit lower, which is always good. And uh, here we were 34% totally vaccinated, and now we're at 35 and then looking at Orleans Parish, we're still at medium risk. Uh, our case rates per 100,000 are going down. Infection rate is going down. Test positivity more or less the same. And our vaccination is almost reaching 46%. So almost 50% of the total population has been vaccinated. So good job, uh, New Orleans. So that's what I, uh, that's what I got right now. Uh, Eric, any, any thoughts, any final words? Anything you no, want to wrap up with? Keep plugging and chugging, and let's uh, get the shots. Stay tuned, folks. For stay tuned for more cartoons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned for more cartoons. Yeah. Yes, we uh, do want to see more of those cartoons coming out. Uh, so we do look forward to uh, to getting them out there. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, as always, thank you uh, so much for all of your guys' wonderful support. Uh, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is 102.3 WHIV. My name is Dr. Mark Allen Derry. Doc Griggs is with me as always. Health is a human right. Doc Griggs will tell you that you should go get checked, get fit, get moving. Get shut the up vaccine. and get the shot. 
and yeah. shut up and get the shot. Uh, and uh, we are so happy that we have an opportunity to spend an hour with you guys every day. Thank you for taking the time to uh, follow us. Uh, please click those links um, uh, and please share the uh, the animation uh, with your uh, with your social media folks, your channels or whatever. Uh, we would appreciate it greatly because that'll help us get the word out. So thank you guys so much. Take care.